All right, welcome to the Cultivate Church Planning Podcast. Exciting episode today, and I'm back with my friend and partner in crime. I'm looking at uh, Jeff Geip. And, uh, Why did that take you so long to say <laughs> my name? What, a friend or Jeff Guy? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Both. Uh, yeah, we're back with Jeff, and, uh, and we're actually in uh, Tennessee. That's right. We're at my home church, Fellowship Bible Church. So this is a, a dueling podcast. Nice. Podcast. What did I say? You said podcast. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so it's starting off really good. Yeah, it's starting off on the wrong <laughs> so, uh, right foot, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. do you want to introduce our guests? Why don't you introduce our guests because they're friends of Jeff. So let me tell you how this kind of came about. I'm up here um, visiting uh, Jeff just because I like him and he's my friend. Mm-hmm. And he invited me, but primarily to meet up with, I've been calling them the Greeks for mm. months now, ever since mm. I knew I was coming here, but turns out they're actually not Greek. <laughs> 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 so Jeff, why don't right. you introduce our, uh, our friends here and um, we'll get into, the, get into the podcast. Yeah, so of course I just got back from Greece where I got to meet Stephen, which I'll introduce in a minute, and I traveled with my friend Dan Vorm. Uh, Dan is uh, with an organization called Hellenic Ministries in Greece. It's been there for decades. Mm-hmm. And Dan actually served as a missionary there in mm-hmm. the late 80s, early 90s. Yep. And uh, looking at him and being in Greece with him, you would think he was Greek. <laughs> so yeah, he has a nice tan. He's got You're a very nice right. listening to the audio here. He's yes. Got a... And when he eats euros... Oh, just like a Greek. Just like a Greek. Just like a Greek. (laughs) I call him gyros. Is that bad? It's bad. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just kidding. I don't know. But also with us is Stephen Calhoun. And Stephen is the um, appointed church planter there in the beautiful city or in the beautiful country of Greece. And he's been with Hellenic Ministries for 17 years. 17 years. Yeah. So he's an American and he looks American, but... You've been there almost half your life, so you are partially... Well, thank you. I, I, I'm glad that you think I'm yeah. that young. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so glad you guys are here. Um, as, I, as I'd mentioned, I was able to spend time with Stephen in, in Greece and uh, just had a great time with him and Dan, and God's doing some amazing things, and that's what we're here to talk about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is what we want to talk about. We were talking uh, a little bit before the... Um, show just with Stephen about what's going on in the ministry there and just amazing stuff, exciting, especially from a church planting perspective. And that's kind of what um, we're all about. So Stephen, why don't you give a, just a quick summary of the ministry, what you're doing, and uh, we'll get into some questions fo- uh, following that. Sure. Um, so to give a, a slight correction there, Jeff, um, I'm not actually a church planter. Um, I'm a wannabe. Um, <laughs> No, I, I get to I get to I get to walk alongside our church planters um, and uh, mentor, coach. Um, we've used those terms uh, earlier today, and I kind of have filled both roles. Um, also, we could add in recruiter and equipper in there as well, um, as we you know really are looking to take young people on mission, expose them to the need in their country, help them find their their gifting, their calling, um, and then journeying with them to find their their kingdom assignment. So yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's really, you know, in a summary, what we do, uh, what, um, my wife likes to describe, I'm, I'm a pastor of the pastors. Um, my teammate, David and I, uh, consider ourselves the Barnabases for the Pauls. Very cool. Hmm. Nice. I like that. Mm-hmm. Hellenic ministries. What's the, what's the main purpose of the, of the ministry right now? Um, well, we've, we've actually, uh, I would say that um, our purpose has always been, uh, since the inception, is to um, to minister like Jesus ministers. Uh, so Jesus um, always ministered to to felt needs. Um, he always planted the gospel wherever he went. Mm-hmm. Um, he made disciples, uh, and then he sent people out on mission. Um, and so uh, we're engaged in in those four streams, if you will, um, in you know probably fifteen different. Uh, types of ministry or contexts. Uh, church planting is just one of those 15. Uh, yet at the same time, every, uh, every ministry work that we do 
um, our, our end desire is to see uh, a community planted as a result of that. So there's a ministry that you're doing, and I, why don't you talk about this for a few minutes. It's called Joshua, what was it called? Mm-hmm. It was called Operation Joshua. Operation Joshua. Dan, why don't you run over what that ministry is? Because this is an amazing thing, and this is something Jeff was talking with me about before I came here. He's like, man, you got to hear what these guys are doing over in uh, in Greece and what this ministry is doing. And this is one of the things that you, you told me about, but Dan, why don't you run... Run through what that that is. Sure, yeah. Operation Joshua is a, actually a Bible distribution uh, uh, program that started what Stephen two thousand four, I think. That's right. So it started really with the Olympics uh, uh, way back then when they were in Greece, and the idea was to go to the islands. You know, a lot of the Greeks were leaving their homes, or renting them out, making some money, and and if not making money by renting their house, at least they wanted to get out of Athens when the whole world was coming to Athens. You know, traffic is bad enough, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so when you had the Olympics, it's like, oh, I'm out of here, you know? So uh, a lot of them have uh, island homes or an, or an island heritage of some sort, uh, and of course on the mainland as well. So there was uh, the, the beginning of Operation Joshua, really at that time was known as Operation Gideon. I'm not sure why we have these names, but they kind of fit for <laughs> us. So uh, for a couple of years, 2004 and then two years later, there was an island uh, outreach to 80 of the uh, mostly inhabited islands that are in Greece. And it was threefold. It was Bible distribution. It was some sort of evangelism, some kind of effort of maybe, you know, singing on a street corner and gaining attention or passing out flyers, that kind of thing. And then a few days of concentrated prayer walking over the islands. So that's kind of where the inception started for Operation Joshua, which came along then as a challenge from our founder, Costas McCreese. Uh, we can talk about him later if you like. But he, he started the ministry there in 1979, 80. It's a fam- it was a family-run ministry, basically. The family had been some of the first modern missionaries from the modern evangelical church to go out as missionaries, foreign missionaries. And they ended up in Irianjai, Indonesia, uh, the opposite side of the island from where Papua is, which many of us have heard about. So it's there in the Stone Age tribes. They worked for a number of years as a family, 20 years almost, 17 years. Um, worked with uh, some people, old timers like me. They would have read a book years ago called Peace Child. Mm-hmm. And yeah, great book, great so th- story. They're actually yeah, story. in that. That yeah. fan, the so the McCree's family, Greeks are actually in that story. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. And uh, so they worked closely with the same mission that Don Richardson and his family worked uh-huh. with. Uh, anyway, so then through sickness, after 16, 17 years, they ended up coming to the states. Uh, the Lord healed Costas from a very significant disease, uh, which he should have died from naturally. And, uh, and they ended up back in her home country of Greece. So uh, the Lord gave Costas 25 more years, and uh, that's where Hellenic Ministries came from then. Out of that family and has grown since then to about 100 missionaries and staff. That's All that great. to say, then, you have the, this, this uh, summer campaign that grew out of Operation Gideon back in 2004. And it became, after reaching, you know, passing out many, many Bibles on the islands, they thought, well, you know, there's the mainland. You know, let's not exclude the mainland. And so outside of Athens and Thessaloniki, the goal has been to get to hand deliver a modern language New Testament, uh, which is kind of a rare thing in an Orthodox home. If they have a Bible at all, it's going to be something that's uh, classical or, or Koine Greek. So it's Shakespearean to us or even further away, very hard to understand, not, not a heart language by any means. And so the goal was to get a, a, a New Testament, the Motiki, which is the modern language, into every home in Greece outside of Athens and Thessaloniki. And by God's grace, over the course of 18 summers, with the help of many people from around the world, uh, Hellenic Ministries is able to do so. so. How many uh, how many Bibles have you distributed? How many homes? <laughs> Just smiling. It's like, what yeah. do you say? So uh, as of 2023, at the conclusion, we've reached over one and a half million homes wow. in Greece. And that incredible? One and a half. One million? and a half. I mean, how many homes is that? <laughs> <laughs> actually, what is the population of Greece? So the the population um, is actually declining. Uh, okay. So in the last decade, it's gone from 11 million to just over 10 million. Uh, okay. Uh, population. Wow. That's incredible. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting what you said about the translation, the modern translation, because those of us who've been, you know, reading, studying the Bible and those listening to the podcast know um, that the New Testament was written in mm-hmm. Greek. So we say, oh, yeah, yes. Greek and then the Old Testament, Hebrew and Aramaic. Yeah. But what we fail to understand is that that Greek is so far removed from the 
The modern. To modern Greek, right. Modern Greek. Some similarities. I mean, uh, a modern Greek speaker will be able to read it, but the meanings, you know, language evolves over time. Yeah. And it's actually simplified some, so it's lost some cases and some endings over time. Well, try reading the King James Version even, you know. Yeah, like that's for right. For young people that are reading that, it's mm-hmm. like, and These that's and just, yeah. you know, a couple hundred years. Right, right. Yeah. Well, so it, along with that, um, the the... It's a great success. We're looking at this number of over a million homes have now a Bible in their possession. But what's next? Like, yeah. <laughs> what's the yeah. angle? So why don't you uh, talk to that, Stephen? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, Are you, is the work done? You can now just no, relax? Or no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the no, beach. Have no, a dry no. road. And take yeah. your speedo <laughs> on and go to the beach. Get the yeah. oil and the speedo and get Same to the beach. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <Go there. laughs> you know, I, I would say that, you know, the work is just starting for, for us. You know, that's, for me, this is this is what I was enduring the last 20 years for, is to, to be able to get to see this moment. Uh, where we start moving into the next phase. And, you know, the next phase is um, looking at homes that have received those New Testaments um, that, are, that are open. You know, if, if we look at the, the passages in Luke, the, the person of peace, uh, looking for those homes where uh, people want to, want to know more. They want to know God. They want to study the scriptures. Um, and, you know, for one reason or another, haven't had that opportunity to do so. Um, and so we're, as we move into the, the Ecos experience, um, now we've, we're launching the Ecos network at the same time as the, the Ecos uh, summer experiences, where we're inviting teams uh, for foreigners uh, to work together alongside Greeks for one week to go on into one location. Um, and this is going to really blow your mind. So. I know a I'm lot ready. of a lot ready of traditional, you know, mission projects. You might go and build something, or you might, or like we did for twenty years, almost give out Bibles, something tangible that you can see and measure at the end of the day. Uh, what we're encouraging people to do is to come and to be. Hmm. So, what does that mean? It means uh, we're not necessarily doing any kind of open air evangelism or giving out tracts, but we're asking people to go and have conversations. Hmm. Or to take wow. those natural conversations and see if they can extend them 30 seconds. Um, and that's very easy to do in Greece because Greeks are very friendly mm-hmm. um, and they love to talk. And what hospitable. about, yeah. um, so if I, I don't speak Greek, um, can I come over as an English speaker and do you have translators that go? Or what's the, do people speak, the, speak English there in the, in the country? Absolutely. So. Yeah. Um, you know, certainly uh, there are some, some communities where, where English isn't as common or, or readily spoken. Uh, but, you know, any of the places that you're going to go uh, in the course of your day, um, if you're going to a bakery to, to get breakfast or to get a cup of coffee, uh, many times the people that are serving you um, have at least a, a decent level of English um, that you can start a conversation um, and what's, what's interesting is that you're not going to be alone. We're, we're partnering you right. with, with local Greeks yeah. uh, who can, can be there to help facilitate if there's a need for translation or if you get stuck or the, the other person right. gets stuck, uh, they can kind of jump in and, and help. Have you found it to be pretty fruitful as far as like people coming over and having these just being? It sound, kind of sounds like my kind of mission trip, huh? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you well, mean I don't have to build a school or anything? I can yeah. just uh, drink well, coffee? Uh, well, basically. <laughs> well, the, the, beauty, the beauty is that, that you know, it, it's something that can work for any age uh, yeah. because you're just being yourself. Yeah. So if you're coming along um, and, you know, maybe you have a few more gray hairs, you can go in and sit in the coffee shops and just have conversations with people because yeah. that's very natural in the context with Greeks to go to the coffee shops, have conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, if, you're, if you're on the younger side, like, uh, like my kids who love to, to throw Frisbee or uh, kick around a soccer ball, um, you know, groups like that can, can go and find a park uh, and just start engaging with the people that are there. Uh, doing what they do, um, so it's it's so a it's very Dan, much. A, Jan, Dan just returned from doing this, right? Yeah, we did. Uh, so, let me back up just a sec. When when we talk yeah. about ecos, uh, we're talking about uh, a Greek word which means household 
or it could be family. I was going to actually ask, but I didn't want to sound dumb. Yeah. <laughs> for our listeners, can well, you please explain yeah, what yeah. ECOS means? Yeah, Not yeah. for me and Jeff. We know. Yeah, yeah you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, fill in what I miss. So. Um, yeah, so uh, in, in modern Greek, you would say it. it well, let me, let me spell it in English. O-I-K-O-S. And so if a person has studied Koine Greek, uh, most likely, if they're here in the States or in the Western world, they would say it as oikos. Isn't that a yogurt? Yeah, it actually is. Mm -hmm. Greek yeah. yogurt. Yeah. That's right. Right. Yeah. Right. This is yogurt evangelism. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> I like it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I not. That's true. That's right. Yeah, so you have at your grocery saying, store. Uh, there you uh, go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. was, okay. So oikos yogurt, yeah, huh? I'm already so, supporting the cause. There you are. <laughs> there you are. So the way you say it in modern Greek is uh, the vowels are said a little bit differently. It's called ikos. And ikos meaning household, and that's the whole idea is to gain entrance into, mm. you know, to start okay. home Bible studies out of which can grow, uh, well, the start relationships upon which we can build the trust that can carry the weight of the gospel. Yeah. And, and then that results in, you know, home fellowships and, and home churches, Lord willing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so this summer we started that, and that was the big question, I think, in our, in our ecosphere of Hellenic ministries and those who know us and and, uh, uh, and are aware of the, the Greek ministry and so forth, it was kind of like, well, what's next? You know, it's got to be something big, right? Because Hellenic Ministries is a, I like to say it's a small mission that has an outsized impact. Over the years, that's been true. Co started by um, a visionary and, and maintained by his son, uh, who's the president, uh, Jonathan, who's also a visionary. And what do visionaries do? They do, you know, they do visionary type things, right? And the rest of us kind of hold on by our fingernails <laughs> if we can. And so, you know, getting a Bible into every rural household in Greece is like, what in the world? Who does that? You know, but God was kind. And with the help of so many people around the world, both financially and, and as foot soldiers on the ground, it happened. So the question for us this past year has been, okay, what's next? And I'm so proud of Jonathan and the team because they were willing to be spirit dependent and just go, you know, it's about building relationships. It's about getting into households and going into tavernas and, and just taking conversations 30 seconds longer to see what the Lord might do yeah. and how we can build relationships. So yes, we had 12, we started this year, Ecos 24, we called it. Um, and we had 12 teams that went out to various corners, a couple of the islands, and then various areas of Greece. Um, and just for the purpose of, you know, going out to eat, getting to know people, going back to eat the same place. Kind of like mm -hmm. if you went to the park, you the went to the park again. Like, so Where can people reach you guys as far as getting connected to the ministry, either with support or possibly uh, visiting? Uh, sure. Uh, one place Asking for a friend. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, we've we've just launched um, a new website called ecosnetwork.net, um, where you can learn about uh, both the network and uh, about the summer experience and how you can get involved. Um, there's an email uh, listed on the website that you can uh, reach out to us, um, and then if you want to see um, the organization that we're part of, Hellenic Ministries. Um, you can see kind of the, the breadth and the, um, all the various different aspects of how we minister in country, um, uh, including the Ecos Network. And that's HellenicMinistries.com. Dot org. Dot org. Dot org, yes. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, and after just visiting, I have to tell you, um, it's such a robust ministry, and it's so beautiful, and mm -hmm. getting to meet... I mean, there's so many different levels that we could talk about uh, mm -hmm. with the refugees and yeah. all yeah. of that. So, yes. yeah, it's um, <clears throat> talk about Christianity and the potential for church planting within the, the country of Greece. Like, because that's I mean, you talk about Bible distribution. Mm -hmm. That's goal one, getting the word of God out into people's hands in their yeah. household that they can understand and read. And then you talk about building those relationships, you know, yeah. having those conversations, bringing teams over. And it's probably mm -hmm. cool for the local people to see the different teams from different places come over and, and talk with them and that sort of thing. But ultimately, we're talking about, and this takes a lot longer, we were talking earlier about the process of church planting. We want people to be, if they're not in a church where they're being uh, taught the Word of God and, and that sort of thing, mm -hmm. Um, how, what is the cultural feeling of Christianity and how can we get more churches so that more people can be involved in a, a healthy fellowship? 
Yeah, that's a great question, Brian. Um, you know, I, I would say that um, you know, ninety-five percent of the people in Greece would um, would consider themselves to be Christian. Um, and so one of the, the big challenges um, is that what does it mean to be a Christian? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, for most uh, to be Greek um, means that you're, you're, you're baptized as an infant and, yeah. and therefore you're a Christian. Um, but for many, um, there, there isn't a personal relationship. Um, and that's, you know, I think where we try to encourage people um, as you look into Scripture, you realize that there's so much more uh, to uh, um, to Christianity mm-hmm. than just a, a baptism or a wedding mm-hmm. um, or the you know the Easter experience where a community is coming together. Um, but we don't necessarily we, we maybe we understand what we're celebrating, but we haven't experienced it. Yeah, it hasn't mm-hmm. become personal in that experience, right. experiential sense. Yeah, so that's, I mean, starting communities where you're meeting together, and it's been, um, talk about that process. Like, how does it go from, here we are, we want to gather together with other believers. Well, we want you to believe first, have a personal relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. But how does it go from there to being a church? And maybe before you even do that, describe kind of what the differences might be for our listeners of a church in the Mm -hmm. American sense. Um, that we're used to, and then what a church sure. would look like over there. Um, if I could just back up one one step further sure. beyond that, uh, just if any of your listeners would be considering uh, a, an eco summer experience, um, I, I just want to give a testimony to the value that foreign teams can bring. Mm. Um, so we we uh, in preparation for ECOS, we were doing a lot of kind of test cases to see, you know, is our is our theory. Right? Is it is it is it is it our theory or is it the Lord leading us? Um, and so we had a, a foreign team that was uh, serving in one of our, our communities in the north, and in that particular community, um, we are ministering predominantly to refugees, uh, but our vision there is really to to impact the entire community, including the Greeks. And so for for the last year, uh, I have been praying and physically walking and putting myself out there, trying to engage with the Greek neighbors in the community with, with very little results and, and no fruit to show for it. Uh, but back in May, we had a team of 20 young people, um, lively, joyful, energetic believers, uh, coming just to serve the Lord and Was serve. Jeff in that group? <laughs> he, said, he said lively and young. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I tell you, um, they, you know, they were in Greece serving with other ministries. And, and so we, we only had them for two days with us. But I tell you, the, the 48 hours that they were with us, um, just even in, in the first few hours, their presence uh, in, in our space uh, attracted the attention of the neighbors in a way that we've not been able yeah. to attract it in a yeah. year. Mm. And conversations started to, to happen between neighbors and, and these foreigners and because the curiosity of why are all these young people here and why are they so happy? And, mm. you know, what, wow. you know, it, that, yeah. that's a big contrast to what, what people are accustomed to in their daily life. And so it ended up opening the door for us to start connecting with the neighbors, which is an answer to prayer. That's huge. I love that because a lot of times you think about short-term mission trips because we were on the mission field. Our family was there for 10 years. We had, you know, tons of trips of short-term teams. And some are helpful and some aren't, as you know. (laughs) But I love the model because not only is it simple um, as as far as what the goal is, but it actually does benefit the the local church and local believers there on on the on the ground. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. great, great stuff. So how does that go then from those experiences, those conversations, those relationships into a church that wasn't you know there before? Sure. Yeah. Well, I would say that. (laughs) Um, so we're, we're still experiencing that in that particular community of seeing how the Lord is going to lead, lead mm. those relationships. But, you know, it starts with, with just the open door for conversation. Um, and, you know, the, the, our life expression, you know, just living the gospel um, has more of an impact on people's lives than we realize. And that was what the neighbors um, said, man, we see something different about you guys. Mm-hmm. And we see life. And we want that. Uh, how do you get it? 
Um, and so we're, we're just starting to have those conversations with, with these people, you know, there, it's a, it's a journey. Um, but what I'll go back to is, um, uh, the first community that we planted, uh, we're now in our 10th year of our lead planters being on the ground. Um, we launched the, the church about seven years ago. Um, and to put in perspective, uh, we're ministering, it's a, it's a mixed community, different people groups. And, you know, our core values, we, um, we're very uh, inclusive in our community building, um, which is a little bit uh, in contrast to the Greek culture, which is very community oriented, but they tend to be very exclusive in their mm. community circles. You've got to fit into their particular right. group. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. And, and so, yeah. and, their, and their sense of community is very strong within their circles. Um, but it's very countercultural for them to step outside of that circle or to invite someone who's outside into that circle. Um, and so with that dynamic, um, we uh, were able to minister to the gospel to everyone. And that ability to reach uh, people groups that wouldn't normally be together um, really opens their eyes. Um, but I'll, I'll just kind of walk you through the timeline mm-hmm. that we talked yeah, about and earlier. Yeah, we're talking about, just, just to interject there, because we, we talked about this earlier, the, the people groups that you're talking about, you have the local Greek people, but you ha- also have a lot of refugees and uh, kind of a migrant uh, community there as well from different countries surrounding mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. are not necessarily as embraced by the local culture or the local people. Correct. As we would like. And then there's also the... Um, what was the other group? That the, we, the Roma community. The Roma community, which would be, is it? Gypsy. The gypsy community. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which are also not very popular, I presume. So That's correct. And, <laughs> but yet, yet the gospel is going out to all these groups, and you have ministry happening within each of these groups. So just to set a little bit of the background that I sure. kind of was up to speed on earlier. So go ahead, go into what uh, what you do now. Yeah, so just, you know, in, in that particular location, we're set up as a coffee shop um, on the ground floor. And we have other floors in the, in the space that we use for different purposes. Um, but the coffee shop is our entryway into the community um, and how we engage in relationship and um, how we were able to serve the different communities that we find in that neighborhood. Um, and, you know, it's through the serving of the marginalized of the community that the, the Greek neighbors have started to see already, you know, our team had a reputation of the, this, there's something different about this place. And the difference that, that, that they would describe is we just feel love. Hmm. Every time we walk wow. by this place, we just feel this overpowering mm. sense of love. Wow. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, and they couldn't describe it. They, they couldn't yeah. explain it. But that love drew them into the doors just yeah. to have a coffee. Um, and then as soon as another neighbor would come, they'd run out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Dan, you were, what, talk about that a little bit, because there's, there's a little bit of hesitancy on the part of the local community to want to kind of come into these, these doors of this Christ, Christian, quote unquote, <laughs> Christian group that we're, we're looking at here. Well, it's a state church context, yeah. and uh, there's a lot of society per- pressure to, you know, uh, be an upstanding member of the church and uh, therefore of the community. So uh, that does provide quite a pushback. Mm. You have the local priest often who's going to be against anybody else who's coming in. You know, when we lived there, um, uh, a couple things happened that, that made me really kind of open my eyes a little bit to that pressure. Being a foreigner, I didn't necessarily feel that at first. Um, but we were trying to do some uh, Bible studies, and we had guitars, and you know, we'd invite people in and so forth. Uh, not a lot of people, but we had some people coming to our home in a certain uh, uh, suburb there in Athens. And one day, we got a flyer under our door, and the flyer was from the local priest, and he was over the whole area there. Um, and it said... First, started out by saying, "Beware of uh, young people with guitars, you know, <laughs> who, are, who are telling Amen. you a different, a different gospel." Scary, you know? scary. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh, it wasn't the '60s, but I mean, yeah, it was, you know, the similar. You know, well, they, they, they in thought. their mind, I mean, just to, to, in their mind, it's it's kind of a threat, and it's it's going against, you know, like what we would see as, you know, very much a so. hostile kind of thing. 
Although you weren't. You were obviously just biblical Christians. Yeah, the, anything that's outside, to your, to your average you know, Orthodox person who's raised in the church and so forth, anything that's outside of Orthodoxy would be not only inferior, but would be a heresy. Mm. So this, he had gone on and listed every type of denomination or church or, or spiritual entity, children of Mo, Jehovah's Witnesses, Catholic Church, Protestant, Reformed. Wow. I mean, he, this was, you know, he had a hundred different names. He'd gone to some kind of a religious dictionary and said, anybody who goes by these names is not, you know, uh, to be, you're not to spend time with them. So that's the kind of, there's a pushback in society, neighborhoods and families. You would pay a price if you're, um, if you stand up for uh, a Protestant or evangelical perspective, you'll pay mm. a price for that. Very interesting. Yeah. It provides the challenges um, and thus why sometimes it can be a little bit of a slow growth, slow process. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I mean, like what you're saying, Stephen, they're seeing love, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. hey, these guys are, there's something unique about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to get, what about you, Jeff? You went over there. When did you get back? It was pretty recent, right? When, when were we there? March? Uh, we came back, yeah, end of April we came back. End of April, yeah. So, what, I mean, had you ever been to Greece before? I had not. That was my first not time. Not even on, like, a vacation nope. or something? No, nope, first time. I did learn tourism, number one industry mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. Greece. Mm -hmm. But um, what, was your pers what was your, like, uh, when you first saw that what these guys are doing, what did you think? You know, I, I had no expectation going over. Um, you know, I mean, I had expectations, but I was trying to rid my mind of those so I would be open <laughs> um, to see what I was going to see. And I was surprised, um, both in in good ways, um, really no bad ways, um, but really in good ways of just seeing that, yeah, there's been a ministry, there's been things that have been happening with Hellenic ministries that are so dynamic and so beautiful over decades, you know, mm -hmm. and God's mm -hmm. doing a good work in, in building up to this, you know, opportunity to plant churches. But I also realized that there, the difficult thing moving forward would be um, in planting churches is finding people that would be able to plant churches there that would be successful. Um, you know, uh, just the nationalistic feeling that you have with Greeks is like mm. the person's got to be Greek, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Is that yeah. the case, Stephen? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you're you've been there for a long time. Like even so, are you accepted as like one of them in a sense, or you're just like what's your? Uh, you know, it's 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 a it's a, <laughs> a quasi acceptance. Um, <laughs> so you know, uh, uh, maybe I'm endured. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Um, they you. you know, they, they, um, well, even my own children yeah, love to, exactly. love to, to you know, <laughs> uh, joke about how terrible my Greek is or, uh -huh. you know, yeah. but the church that he was speaking about, um, which you were going on an, on yeah. the timeline we visited and I met the pastor and the, the potential pastor that's going to be taking over. And my heart was filled with joy mm. um, because what I saw was what I thought maybe was impossible is very possible. Mm. Um, and mm. it was a very dynamic experience on the island of Crete there. Yeah. Mm. And so, um, yeah, tell us, you were starting to tell yeah. us that timeline. So sure. Uh, so yeah, to put things before in, I interrupted. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's great. So so we sent we sent our lead planter uh, uh, as a couple in in 2014, um, you know, with strict instructions that they couldn't they couldn't lease a space for at least a year um, because we wanted them to prove out all the assumptions and theories. Um, you know, they had been preparing for seven years uh, for this move to mm. to be able to go and plant a church there. Um, and so, of course, they were a bit shocked when they said, well, what do you mean? We have to wait 12 months before we can mm -hmm. lease a space? This is, we're finally here. Go have uh, a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> we know a place. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I, I can remember the, the coaching conversations that we would have and the, the frustration from my Greek teammate that was there. Um, but, you know, in hindsight, um, he's actually grateful that he took that time because one, it, it gave confidence in the things that were affirmed in the original vision, uh, but it also gave definition um, and nuance uh, into some of the, the things that we hadn't really considered uh, in a space that we, that we needed to have in order to reach the, the target audience that we wanted to reach. Um, so just as, a, as an example, 
Um, you know, we knew we were going to be serving the poor, uh, but what service were we going to provide? Uh, what was needed? Um, so after a thorough research and investigation, we found uh, what were some of the, the felt needs that weren't being met uh, by the community. Um, we had, you know, sadly, as a, as a, a father of five, um, had no vision for, for children's ministry or how we would actually minister to families. Um, and realized that you know it was critical to have uh, a children's space uh, in the in the facility, and, and in fact, um, our, our lead planter actually built it out himself in order to to have that space um, to be able to reach the uh, the young families that were going to be coming into into the community. Um, so these are just some small examples of of you know what came out of that that patient process. And would. Like slowly but surely, people started to get connected, to gain trust, because that's a right. big, I mean, right. just as Dan was mentioning earlier, just with the challenges, like it's not easy to gain that trust. Once they start to trickle in, did you find that then neighbors would invite neighbors and people would eventually get into the Sunday service type situation? Yeah, so that, that timeline, you know, we opened our center in, in 2016, uh, January. And it wasn't until um, 22 before we had the Greek neighbors attending their first Sunday morning church service. Now, it took years for them just to come in, get a coffee, and go. And then get a coffee, have a short conversation, and then go. Mm -hmm. Have a coffee, have a conversation reluctantly agree to go to a Bible study. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and all the while just you know, a little nervous about the whole situation. Entirely, right? mm. entirely. Yeah, wow. mm. um, you know, and so, but, you know, from 22 to 24, we see, uh, you know, the first people making their decision of taking two years of yeah. coming to Sunday, Sunday services and considering belonging to the community. And this is what I, I found really beautiful is that the neighbors... Who are, who are connected to the community, feel a part of the community and own this as they belong to this community. This is their church. They know it's yeah. a church. This is their church, even before they make a decision uh, to surrender their lives to, to the Lord. Wow. That's crazy. Huh? I mean, mm. not crazy. It's cool, but that's yeah. just neat to see <laughs> mm -hmm. that. It's so ingrained. I mean, you just have to work within the cultural context that you're going into, and it's so ingrained in that culture to be a community-based people that that came before even a, an accepting of, of Christ. So I love it. And it's, it's so time in, intensive. Like it's just, it just takes a long time. Yeah. Trust is we not We want everything now. Out. We want it fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, how do you measure success, right? Exactly. In the Greek yeah. context, you're going to measure it very differently than you would in the North American. What would you say is the average um, size of a, a healthy church congregation in Greece? Oh, man. Well, you do have some larger ones in the Athens area, but Stephen, would you say 30 to 50 would be an average size? Yes, mm -hmm. that would be a, a typical yeah. average size. And that would probably be a church. A, a, like a nice size church, like you have 30 to yeah, 50 or like, yeah, yeah it's mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. And just the fact that it's so relational, um, really, it, it shows a, a really mature health. Like these people are coming to church because they want to know Jesus. Yeah. It's yeah, not, right. it's not part of a, a cultural. It's not easy to do. It's right. Like, it's here, not it's an like easy, easy thing to, to do. You walk in mm -hmm. and you just, if you don't like it, you just leave there. It's like a real commitment. Right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cost uh, us much. Yeah. It costs them a lot. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. what's on the horizon? What, what are you looking forward to over the next uh, season of Well, ministry in Greece? Absolutely. Well, what I'm, what I'm excited about, so in our Crete church plant, um, we're now at a level of maturity. Um, I think you alluded to meeting. Uh, we've now uh, established our first elders. Um, we, we now have our successor for taking the church forward. Uh, so that our, our lead planters can go and, and uh, launch in a new area. Um, and that's, that's really going to expand and multiply our reach in the country. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm based in, in Athens, but I'm working all over country outside mm -hmm. of, of Athens for the most part uh, to the far ends of, of the country, uh, traveling quite a bit. So it'll be nice to have someone uh, on location further away that can help uh, carry some of that, that vision and, and, yeah. and burden. Yeah. Well, I'm excited for you guys because I think of it as um, just a picture that came to my mind is like the sower of seeds, you know, mm -hmm. you've sowed mm -hmm. the seed of the word of God right. literally into a million plus homes. 
and now what seeds do is they sprout up and you see exactly. a small little mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. starting and it's taken a couple of years and mm -hmm. I wish it would go faster, mm -hmm. but it's not. <laughs> and right. it's growing and you're getting to the point, I think, you know, this could be a very, very fruitful season. Absolutely. Harvest. We we believe it. Um, you know, and, and seeing that the the Creek community now we've got um kind of the beachhead, if you will. Yep. You know, we've got the or proof of concept as we would use in, in my old industry <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, jargon, um, that uh, we now have a space in country that we can bring leaders and, and future planters to come um, and experience uh, to, to really um, not just learn the theory, but experience the DNA, experience the culture to be able to replicate uh, in other parts of, of Greece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amazing. One of the things that um, I'm personally excited about is is the um, the possibility of exponential growth? Yes, and you know, uh, as you were speaking, I was thinking of Jesus's words. You're right; the harvest is is ready, but the laborers are few. Mm. And Dan and I were talking about this a few weeks ago. It's like, where where do we find laborers? Where do we find men uh, that would be willing to? to go and plant churches, mm -hmm. you know, and especially with the criteria I believe you've got to be Greek, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and so we were, we were tossing around different things. Of course, there are evangelical churches there mm -hmm. that maybe would be a pool to, to fish from. Uh, I know you have a Bible college that you work closely right. with. Yes. Um, so those are a couple areas, but Dan and I were talking about what about Greek speaking men, that are part of a church here, even in America, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, I don't right. know of any personally, but I would mm -hmm. imagine there are, you know, those types of places that maybe we could pull from and maybe even somebody listening to this podcast would say, Oh, I know a Greek church right down the street, you know, mm -hmm. but just, you know, um, finding those people that God has called because this, this is exciting. I mean, it's weird to say that because right. the apostle Paul <laughs> was in Athens, right? Oh, he yes. was in Crete. He was in Malta. I mean, he's all yes. those places. Yes. So it seems strange to say that, but it, it's just such a, it's such a need. Um, and it seems like God's really doing something. So mm -hmm. I think it's a little yeah. bit different now than it was at the time of the Apostle Paul. Too. A little bit. So, no, <laughs> it's a new, new generation. Of That's right. <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. Well, you know, what, what I would say is that, um, you know, a decade ago, we had uh, a, a nice group of young people who um, were just eager to serve the Lord, um, didn't know how, didn't know where, um, that as we took on mission, um, they started to find their gifts. And, you know, it's, it's exciting to see that, um, you know, most of those people are now in full-time ministry. Uh, not all of them are church planners. Not all of them are working with Hellenic Ministries. Some are working, you know, they're, through the experience, their local church recognized gifting and started to employ them and, and empower them uh, to do ministry uh, in their context, which for us, that's a victory for the kingdom. Um, you know, a decade later, I never thought I would be in this position where we actually have now more more work happening, and I don't have enough workers. I don't have enough leaders mm. that we're equipping to be able to send out to cover the needs. Mm. Um, so, uh, so Jeff, yeah, we we would welcome Greek speaking, uh, Greek background folks that maybe don't live in Greece right now. Um, there's been, you know, a big push to uh, make it easier for the the Aspora to be able to come back um, and to. Uh, either live in Greece or even just to be able to reconnect with the homeland. Um, so that, that certainly would be an opportunity there as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, guys, been great having you uh, on the show. Jeff, is there any last, uh, last questions you have for our dis distinguished guests? Yeah, no questions other than... Uh, <laughs> Really, the no. The Greeks, yeah. as I call them. For the Greeks. The <laughs> Greeks that are not Greeks. Not Greek. That's right. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Um, really, no questions, but just a request for our listeners. Um, 
really a twofold request. Number one is that people would just be praying for yeah. Hellenic, Hellenic ministries mm-hmm. and the ecos um, mm-hmm. that they're putting together. We didn't talk about so much more of what is happening there, but if you feel led to go and visit Greece, you know, you can contact them. Uh, we mm-hmm. gave the contact information. Maybe we can put it in the, yeah, we'll put it in the show notes. In the show yeah. notes. Mm-hmm. Or you can, if you know me, you can contact me because we're going to be working closely over the years. We could put, you know, adjective teams and that mm-hmm. sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then, yeah, really just prayer. And then also for those young men that maybe want to plant churches, you know, um, cultivate, we want to work with you, you know, cultivate wants to work with you and help, yeah. help you get mm-hmm. set up. And so. Wonderful. Yeah. Great. Dan, any last words that you want to share? No, thanks for the opportunity. Mm. Privilege. Yeah. Glad to have mm-hmm. you on the show. Stephen, thanks for uh, being with us. God bless your ministry. We're going to be praying for you and with you. I'm so glad we got to take this time to, for me to come up here to Tennessee, of all places, That's right. and talk about Greece. Might be time to go have some barbecue. Yeah, or a, or a gyro. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, forgive our friend Brian. All right, guys. Just a little learner. <laughs> Thanks so much for being on the show, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening. The Cultivate Church Planning Podcast is part of CGN Media, a podcast network that points to Christ. Check out cgnmedia.org for more great shows and ways to support the ministry.